Hi, I'm Sean Munger. I'm That History Guy. And it's been a while since I've done one of these historical thoughts videos, so uh, I thought I'd get one out there. The question today is this. Is the internet going to replace, or has it already replaced, books, therefore making libraries superfluous? Spoiler alert, no, it hasn't. In a cage match between the world of books and the world of the internet, books have an overwhelming advantage. They aren't going to be replaced anytime soon. Let's talk for a moment about books. I probably have more contact with books than uh, many people do. Uh, you see a whole bunch of them behind me, for, for example, and out of camera range, you don't see the various other shelves of books that are all over this room. I'm a historian, so books are uh, pretty natural to me, and I also write books. Uh, this one, called uh, Jake's 88, uh, is uh, coming out, has just come out. Uh, you can find it on Amazon uh, uh, if you'd like. Um, I could not imagine a world without books uh, or living my life in a way in which books aren't uh, prominent or even primary to my life and my work. Occasionally, I encounter people who live in a different world, a world in which books are not only not primary, but virtually unknown. Some of these people are kids or teenagers uh, who look upon reading as a chore that's limited to school times. I understand that. Uh, and others are adults with busy lives who seem to have no use for books or who claim that they don't have time to read. I understand that too. But one of the most amazing perceptions that I've observed among some of these people, not all, but some, is the assumption that somehow the internet has replaced books. Uh, one need not read real books anymore, this thinking goes, because everything you need to know is now on the internet and Google is much quicker uh, to use than trying to find a book about something. Plus, we have stuff like this. Uh, e-books. Uh, this is actually an antique. This is a Barnes & Noble Nook from about 2011. They no longer support these, but uh, we do have e-books, and there are also uh, large-scale projects underway like Google Books or Archive.org who are digitizing the world's libraries. Look, for instance, at this very rare book from 1817 that I recently used as a source on my podcast, Second Decade. I found this book uh, in full online for free. Given this kind of thing, it's tempting to believe that the era of books and printed technology may really be ending because the internet, or at least some form of, inter of uh, electronic data matrix, will replace the book in the human experience. I think the reality is a little different, a lot different, in fact. The internet clearly has replaced some books. General reference sources, uh, absolutely. There's no need to buy a set of Encyclopedia Britannica anymore. In fact, Encyclopedia Britannica closed down its sales division in 1996. If you want to know, for example, who the Secretary of War in the first Grover Cleveland administration was, uh, Google or Wikipedia is very good for this kind of thing. It was William C. Endicott, by the way. But this is really only a superficial analysis. To figure out whether the internet can replace books, you need to ask the question, what is the degree of overlap between the world of the internet and the world of books? Though it's extremely hard to quantify, it seems clear to me that the world of books is quite different than the internet. It's more diverse, its subjects are broader, and the depth of its knowledge is much deeper. Various attempts have been made over the years to count the number of bits in an average book, uh, a bit of information I'm talking about, and then extrapolate this to some quantifiable figure of uh, how much information might actually be in all the libraries of the world. That figure could then be compared to the much easier to find figures about how big the internet is in terms of data. But I think this simplistic analysis misses the point. Even with as large as the internet is and as fast as it's growing, the body of knowledge in the world's books is dwar dwarfs it by a landslide. That may seem like a bold statement and maybe an illogical one, but I think it's true and here's why. Think about it. Most of the internet consists of data which is not intelligible to human beings. 
human expression. We're talking about web pages, blogs, tweets, YouTube videos, Google Books, audio files, all of that human expression is a tiny, tiny film on the very surface of a deep ocean of ones and zeros. Most of the internet, in terms of the percentage of data, is meant to be read by computers, not by human beings. How much data it takes to make up a particular file also has very little to do with its content. Here is a JPEG file of a plain white square. With big enough dimensions and at super high definition, super high resolution, this file is 42 megabytes. By contrast, this thumbnail of the Mona Lisa is only 8 kilobytes. What I'm getting at is that in electronic format, there's no relationship of content to data, but there is when we're talking about printed words. Think about this sentence, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. That sentence printed like this in six point font contains exactly the same information, exactly the same amount of content as if that same phrase was projected on the wall of a building, the side of a building in letters several feet high. Also, what's on the internet? Uh, an easy answer is that most of it is pornography or cute cat videos. Uh, the statistic you may have heard that 37% of the internet is porn is actually not true. Uh, the BBC did a study on this and refuted that. But how much content is there in a video of a cat walking on a treadmill or uh, playing the piano? Perhaps you've seen this or videos like it. This is the Cantina song from Star Wars repeated over and over and over again for 10 hours. The fact that this video exists is the content that it's meant to convey. If you watched all 10 hours of it, you wouldn't have received any more content than you would by noting, hey, that's a 10 hour video of the Star Wars Cantina song. The vast majority of books that have ever been published in human history have not survived. Even setting aside high profile tragedies like the burning of Louvain University Library by German troops in World War I, or the destruction of the Great Library of Alexandria in the 3rd century AD, the world's libraries, since their inception a couple thousand years ago, have exercised a gatekeeping function. No library can keep a copy of every book ever written, so somebody, somewhere, from ancient Greece to the public library of Elmira, Michigan, has to make decisions about which books to acquire and which ones to leave alone. There's no unified standard for these decisions, which have been made with totally inconsistent motives by many, many people over the centuries. And this process of selection certainly cannot, said, cannot be said to have preserved the best books of the human race. But the process of selection has narrowed the field of books in the world to a body of knowledge that somebody, somewhere, has deemed significant for some reason. Consequently, as a result of that, the data contained in a library is far less random than that found on the internet. On the internet, your only limitation is how much data you can store. That's a function of technology. It's not the same as a physical library. Another point, there is a vast repository of information stored in physical libraries that has never been and probably never will be available electronically. Take, for example, many of the sources that I use for my PhD dissertation. While I was working on my dissertation, I spent about a month in residence at the Massachusetts Historical Society. My research involved weather and climate during the decade of the 18-teens. And part of my source base consisted of personal diaries or ship's logbooks or letters from that decade that mentioned weather or climate. I read dozens, perhaps hundreds, of handwritten journals and letters originals, not copies, uh, which were stored in, in these archives. I had to go through them page by page in real time because they were not indexed and nobody really knew what was in them. These letters and diaries have never been digitized and there's no plan to do that. The resources don't exist to do that anyway, so they'll probably never be digitized. If I'd had to rely on purely on digital sources available on the internet, my research would not have been very good. This issue is not limited to archives with specialized historical documents. 
Indeed, there are whole sections of physical libraries full of printed books that are uncatalogued. You can't find them in the computer catalog or on a web page. You have to go physically look at them in order to find anything. Usually, these books are very old and were originally archived under the old Dewey Decimal System. And when libraries began changing over to computerized finding aids in the 1980s and 1990s, they didn't have the manpower or the funds to recatalog these books that were uh, done under a, a different system. So there they sit, a treasure trove of historical information, and even the librarians can't tell you exactly what's there. There was a section of uh, these quote-unquote uh, stealth books, books that were invisible to the computer system, in the main library of the university where I did my graduate work. Years ago, online, I encountered a, a young man, a very naive one, I think, uh, who believed that the choice of reading books versus listening to podcasts or watching YouTube videos was solely a choice among the available methods of data delivery. He said it was great that I enjoyed reading books, but he preferred watching TED Talks on YouTube as if it was a choice between Coke and Pepsi. While I don't know, of course, I didn't really know this person very well, I would venture a guess that he had never set foot in a library before, or at least never really taken the time to see what's in one. The book is truly one of the greatest technological inventions the human race has ever devised. It's an information delivery system that has withstood the test of time and has outlived many technological Johnny-come-latelys over the years. Books face no serious challenge from the world of the internet. Thousands of years from now, there will still be books. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share.